Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Open Active Adoption Engagement Forum on uh, Wednesday, 26th of June, 2024. Um, great to see you all here. Um, anyone who is new to uh, Open Active or, or new to these calls either, either here um, live uh, on, in the meeting or if you are catching up with the recording on YouTube, then uh, please do join our Open Active Slack workspace at sl slack.openactive.io. Um, it's a really, really good place to meet other people in the community and, and share ideas and um, and uh, projects that you're working on and, and also a good way to keep up to date with um, all, the, all the latest goings on with uh, with Open Active. So please do join um, join that if, if you're not uh, already in there. Um, just a quick look at the agenda. There's not, not much on there today because we've got one one big uh, main main topic on on the agenda. Um, we'll start with the usual round of introductions, um, and then we're lucky to have the team working on the uh, stream project in, in the water sector here to uh, talk a bit about that um, and uh, some of their ideas and thoughts about how they want to um, work with Open Active on, on a use case, which is really exciting. So so looking forward to that. Um, and then there should be a bit of a chance at the end for for people to ask questions and, and sort of raise anything else that, that you'd like to, which um, which would be good. So um, as I say, I'll start with the usual round of introductions just so we can get to know everyone on the call. So um, if you don't know me, my name is Tim Corby and I work for the Open Data Institute. Um, and we have a small uh, team here at the ODI which stewards the um, Open Active initiative on behalf of the community. And um, we do things like us. Uh, uh, um, running secretariat services for these community forum calls um, and also uh, do some technical maintenance of, of the open active infrastructure um, and I, I will pass over to uh, some of my other colleagues which are on the call so um, Howard if I come to you next hello there yeah Howard ask you uh, one of the um, senior data technologists at the ODI and one of the uh, technical support for the open active initiative here at the ODI Great, thanks, Howard. Uh, Andrew? Uh, hi, I'm Principal Data Specialist for ODI, and I'm the project lead here for Open Active. Thanks, Andrew. And Darren? Hi, I'm Darren Temple uh, at the ODI. Uh, I'm a consultant here and wearing a technical hat um, for the Open Active initiative, helping with uh, data analysis and tools. Great, thanks, Darren. Uh, Dave, can I come to you next? Hi, Dave Barker from Northside. Uh, we develop software um, linked to uh, wellbeing and activity finding. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Yasmin. Sorry, I'm Yasmin. I work for Active Kenneth Medway and I lead on uh, Activity Finder. Cool. Thanks, Yasmin. Uh, Tom. Hi, hey everyone. Tom Marley played, and we are trying to make sport and physical activity more accessible. Great, thank you, Tom. Uh, Emma? Hi, Emma Gooch. I'm the Data and Insight Manager at Yorkshire Sport Foundation. Um, yes, I lead on all things um, open data, digital, and data and insight. So, yeah. Great, thanks, Emma. Uh, Jessica? Hi, um, so I'm Jess Davis from um, SEA Partners, which is a um, management strategic consultancy supporting uh, the STREAM initiative. Um, so my current role is program manager for STREAM. Great. And thanks all for, for letting us join today. Cool. Thanks, Jess. Uh, Alessia? Thanks, Tim. Yeah, I'm Alessia, and I'm currently working as the product owner at STREAM. So looking over the day-to-day -day operations and working really closely with Jess to um, continue growing this. So I won't say too much, otherwise that will cover our um our slides but yeah it's great to be here thank you cool thank you yeah no spoilers um grace hi i'm grace i come from summers activity and sports partnership and i'm the open data project officer so yeah i look after everything open data for sas great thanks grace um mac afternoon everyone uh i'm mac i'm the insight officer for active sussex great thank you mac and lindsay Hey, I'm Lindsay. Um, I'm from Heartsport and Physical Activity Partnership, um, and I lead, or I am doing for the next month before the project ends, on the um, moving more activity finder. So I solely work just on the activity finder. 
Brilliant. Thanks, Lindsay. Great to have you here. So thank you again, everyone, for joining. And really great to have you here. Um, and without further ado, I will pass over to you, Alicia. Yeah, thank you. So I'll share my screen if that's OK. I've got a few slides just to give a brief intro into what stream is and then hopefully share what we're planning to do and hopefully get some ideas going or any tips or feedback from um, everyone that's been involved to date. So um, I'll just move to the next slide. So Stream is currently made up of 16 of the UK water companies and also working along partners like how Jess mentioned at SEA Partners to all come together to look at how we can solve um, open data in the water sector. So we've got lots of engagement, like you can see from um, the water companies, and we've been working to date with them and some other wider stakeholders to make sure we're doing things in the right way. So what is Stream's vision? It's to unlock the potential of water data to benefit customers, society, and the environment. And how we're doing this is through use cases and data sets, like we're gonna talk a bit about today. Our ecosystem, which is all the people that might get involved with us as Stream, the processes that underpin everything that we do here, and the technology, so our platform and other things that we're working with. So how did we get to where we are today? Stream was formed in April 2020, and this was where we realized and validated the need for open data. And in March 2021, we translated this strategy into a delivery plan and started to engage those delivery partners that we needed to to get this off the ground. Then a blueprint phase was funded via the off what water breakthrough innovation challenge and this helped us then start the development of that blueprint to really understand what the design and execution was needed for an open data solution for the water sector and then in May 2023 stream was announced the winner of the breakthrough challenge which meant we got more funding to then work towards a minimum viable platform and where we are today. So in December 2023, we managed to release the first open data sets and also a, a minimum viable platform that proved what we could do and got people to get us feedback and learn anything that we needed to do differently or improve or keep the same for next time. And then in April of this year, we launched our Enduring platform. So the one that's still there today. And also we managed to release other data sets with this and some community features that we're hoping to get people more involved with. And from here on out, really, we're moving to a more steady state of uh, releasing more data and getting more community engagement and this is why we're kind of here today, because we go through a process which I'll talk about, which is all about prioritising what data sets we want the water companies to work on next. And Open Active actually came out as one of them. So go to the next slide. So I just wanted to briefly share what our minimum viable platform was about in December. So you can see I just got a few screenshots on the left and one of the key things that we did here was looking at that commonly requested data, which was environmental information regulation, which um, might not be relevant here, but this was something that we knew could be a, not necessarily a quick win for the water companies, but it was relatively low risk and low complexity, which meant we could really get it out to the public domain relatively quickly and safely and start to prove to the water companies and our other stakeholders why open data is important. So this consisted of the annual performance report tables, the water company boundaries and domestic water quality. 
We then, like I said, launched our updated platform in April. And if you want to go and have a look, you're more than welcome to. And this is where we really started to look at the high value and high priority use cases. So we now are moving into this space where we really need to prove that value of open data and what it can do for not only the water companies, but like I said, the um, customers, society and the environment those are our key points of value that we're trying to work towards so we um, managed to get the water companies to release water consumption data we're working on the pollution event data raw water storage levels that's hard to say and leakage nightline data and we're currently like i mentioned working through the ones that are coming next and that's where Open Active comes in and where I'm really grateful that we managed to come here to speak today because, like I mentioned, we're working with the 16 water companies and we managed to get Open Active prioritised. So within how Stream runs, we have something called an advisory group, which means they help us give advice about what um, use cases might come next and what sort of those hot topics in the sector or in the world going on that we think the stream members could support by releasing their data and open active did get prioritized as a point of really being value to not only customers but society as well so we're looking to work with the water companies as part of stream to publish their recreational data as a lot of them have recreational sites or walking um, routes that we think would be really valuable to get these opened up as a lot of that data is either just hidden away on their website or um, they might be able to find it somewhere but not as easy as it could be so that's why we really believe that open active had great value that we could bring in and start to get, open up that data and um, diversify the data that we're providing as stream as well so um the pain points that we believe this will solve from a stream perspective is that customers lack a centralized hub for that leisure information from water companies and therefore it's reducing those site visits or even just the knowledge that they exist in the first place and um, we believe that this was a really great opportunity for us to collaborate with open active and everyone else that's already part of it to really enhance that discoverability of the recreation activities um, available as through the water company locations and again we believe this will really help increase that engagement for the water companies by partnering with open active and can really boost that participation and visibility of what's going on and we believe there could also be other data shared as part of this process not only the locations activities and hours and the amenities of these leisure sites so one thing I just wanted to talk about here that we do as part of Stream is we host workshops with our water company members. And this is where we'll introduce them to the topic. So we'll talk about Open Active and all the documentation that's already available, which is amazing for us. So that's a really great part of being able to work through this. And we'll work with them to introduce them to this topic and start to understand what data they currently have that could could fit into here and make sure it comes across in the format it needs to be to be part of open active and we'll really start to do some of those deep dives into that data so that's coming up in uh, the middle of July so it's also a little shout out but I'm sure we can talk about it a bit later is just if anyone is willing to come along to these workshops to either share how they use this data or um, how they've been part of Open Active, I'm sure this is something that they would love to hear and it would really help enhance that tangibility, I guess, of what we're doing in this space. So we can, we'll definitely talk about that. Um, and that was it really. So uh, hopefully, I know that was a really whistle-stop tour, but I just wanted to really leave the floor open for a discussion about 
um, how we can get more involved and definitely be joining the Slack channel. But anything we can learn from or help the water companies to work in this space. So, yeah, thank you. And open to any questions as well. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Alicia. Um, yeah, I just at that point, we can yeah open the floor and, and see if there's any any questions from um, anyone on the call today. Sorry, I've got I've got a question. Um, okay, it's okay. a great presentation. Um, really interesting. Um, how um, have you got consistent buy in across all of those 16 water companies to provide the same data? Or is it a battle when you decide on a data set um, to get all of them to sign up to it? Yeah, that is a great question. So we do have really good engagement from all of the 16 water companies. However, how we've been working to date is that as long as we have a minimum of three water companies that wanting to publish that data, that's a good enough amount for us because we believe that once they start to see the value coming in, they'll join in too. But for the ones we've done so far, um, we've had 10 water companies on one of the previous use cases and um, seven on some others. So it's a bit of a mixed bag, depending on their own priorities. But we have had good engagement so far. It, it just depends what's also going on inside their company at the time as well. Alicia, if I can just jump into that yeah, as well. Sure. So um, one of the key principles that we've tried to adopt is um kind of going like taking the industry on this journey together but also recognizing that a number of the water companies um are further behind in their data maturity journeys um and also some of especially the smaller um particularly water only companies do have less resource when it comes to these types of things so what we try and do is make sure that we do have representation and involvement from all of the members in those data workshops so that when we're making decisions about the schema and the standard that we'll publish to and what data sets all of the members are part of that conversation but as and when they publish that is kind of individual um individual responsibility really great Thank you very much. Um, any other questions? I think just while uh, people are pondering, I might take a chair's privilege. One that's, that sprung to mind for, for me was, um, do you have any sense of the, the kind of scope of the leisure data that um, water companies have? You know, uh, the, uh, do they all have leisure data? And, and if so, how, how much? Yeah, I think that's something that we'll definitely be exploring in the workshops. It's not something that I know off the top of my head, and I doubt some of them even know themselves what that might look like. So I think it's going to be an interesting activity to see what they have currently or if they'll need to um, look into it further. But a lot of the water companies have recreational sites, but some of them are working, they sort of contract them out I believe so it might be that smaller providers then provide activities on these contracted out locations so we're going to explore if the scope includes those as well or if it's more just to explore um, the water company only ones so yeah I think that's definitely something that will come out on the workshops so um, will be interesting to see what people think and I know some of the water companies, Anglian Water specifically, because that's where I used to work, they have a whole recreation team. It's a really big part of their organisation, but some of the smaller ones, like Jess mentioned, might only have one person looking at that thing. So um, it's definitely one for us to take into consideration. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, Andrew, I think you had your hand up. I did, but Alicia actually answered my question in her answer to your question, so I, I feel like I need to find another question on the spot now. Um, one thing it might be interesting to do is to have a look at whether there's any activities on water company sites that is already published with the open active data. Um, and, and I think that might be an, an interesting bit of analysis to do so that we can yeah. show but already perhaps already some water companies are doing this or perhaps not yeah, actually um but dave uh i'll come to you 
uh, I've got a question and an idea. <laughs> Firstly, um, it is when you say water data, do you include um, coastal areas in this? Does the sea come into it, or is this all in all in land? Um, I think again, we'll have to check, but it, it's whatever the water company's sort of service area, which a lot of them do have coastal areas. So I think that it could be up for um, grabs, but I'm not one hundred percent sure at this moment in time. Have to because obviously that. that that then opens up a massive spectrum um, yeah. uh, across the um, paddle boarding and swim. Well, um, I was going to say wild swimming, cold water swimming um, communities yeah. that you look at there. And the other one is um, a lot of people will know this name. I think you should talk to Adam Freeman Pask, um, who's currently, um, I think he's CEO of Fulham uh, Rowing Club now, but he used to be um, head of innovation in Sport England and he'll probably have loads of contacts that would help you with the sort of engagements that you want to achieve, especially in, with, with, with leisure. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, really good idea. Um, Emma. Uh, just reflecting on something you said um, about whether it was just going to be the water providers data, like recreational data, or whether it was anybody that used the site, just thinking from a, kind of end user perspective if the recreational data is being open it would be useful if within the workshops and conversations that you are having that it would be all of the recreational data that's open because otherwise it yeah it just only provides a snapshot of what's going on in in those areas and doesn't really allow people to search for everything that's going on and find an activity that really really suits them i know it's difficult because we can't force anybody to ever open up their their data but to kind of encourage and get them to think about why it's it's useful for more than just their data to be open I think it's useful to to always bear in mind yeah that's really helpful thank you I think that's some great points that we'll make sure is covered in the workshops it's definitely things like that that we might not have thought about is yeah really helpful thank you great thank you Emma uh, Jess yeah sorry I have a question not sure who best um to direct it to but I think when we had um the initial chat um previously Tim with yourself and also with Andrew um we heard quite a lot about the existing standards that have already been put in place um and I think that's really interesting for stream because what well one of the things that we're trying to do is is really to drive consistency and make sure that um, data publication doesn't happen in 18 different ways and, and just reduces the utility. So I guess my broad question is how do we best engage and work with the work that's already been done on setting the standard for data to be published to? Because I think it's important that we bring that heavily into the workshops. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. So, so the open active infrastructure is is quite mature in a lot of ways. It's not very mature in other ways, but in a lot of ways, it's quite mature. Um, and there are a whole stack of companies who provide booking systems into the the, the sport and leisure markets that have a pipe an open active feed coming out of their booking system. So, you know, I, I think there's a question about how the water companies would implement open active. Would they build a new piece of technology using the open active specifications or would they look at the market and look at those existing solutions and, and adopt one of those existing solutions? Um, and I think that's a, probably a discussion for each water company to make. The advantage of open active is if, if each water company procures an open active solution, then the data that comes through the open data feeds will be standardized. Um, but I, I think there's a, a piece of, there's probably a piece of discovery work and a piece of architecture work to decide out what the right approach for stream is. Um, and I don't know what the answer to that is. Yeah, but I think that makes sense as the steps to, to go through to explore and agree that, um, I think it, you know, each water company will have to make that decision themselves but I guess wherever we can drive consistency that's the goal yeah and we do provide a 
various tools to kind of help people validate the data they've got and and uh, you know move towards that that consistent high quality um and we're exploring alternative approaches to to making it easy to publish data as well so it, there are there are a range of options there but i think that is we we can present those to to in in the workshop i think and yeah that would be really helpful Brilliant, thank you. Um, did anyone else uh, on the call have any any thoughts? Uh, Tom, Matt, Grace, uh, Lindsay, Yasmin, any of you have any um, questions or thoughts or any was... ideas about how you might use uh, use data, use this data if it were to be opened up? Sorry, yeah, um, that was yeah really interesting and sounds like you've made super like really good progress. So. Congrats on that. I think just adding on to what Dave said, I think uh, we work with active TEMs who are engaging multiple water sports organ organizations across the Thames and London, Kent, Essex. So um, if so, Jenny, who's leading on that project, is actually going on maternity leave imminently. But um, I think that will tie into stuff some with Adam as well. So, yeah. I can connect the dots there if that's helpful. Yeah, that would be really great. Thank you. Cool. Thank so, you, Tom. So yeah. that's managed by the Port of London Authority. Um, well, I think I might actually be talking to someone. I'll, I'll double check, but Jenny, yeah, that would be great. Might be, yeah. yeah. I, think, um, I think Jenny was someone I introduced you to, actually. Yeah. So, yeah okay, I perfect. Tom, yeah. Uh, Emma. Um, sorry, this question is probably a lack of my technical knowledge, as I don't ever um, profess to be a technical expert on any of these things, is um, will the front end, so in terms of obviously we've got activity finders at the moment that allow us to search for certain things, will that have to change based on this new set of data or will it, will it all just work quite seamlessly if the water companies do open? I'd normally send this kind of question to Tom, um, because he, we have a played activity finder on our website. So <laughs> yeah, just how that, that would kind of work in terms of coming through to the front end. Is that quite easy to do or? Who wants to take it? I think I'll, I'll <laughs> say for the, um, the principle is that if the data providers share the data in a consistent way, then the data consumers don't have to make any changes, you know, they can, they can add to it. So that is, that would be the, the ideal. Um, we'll look in the workshops if that's feasible with, with the data that, uh, that that's coming from the water authorities. Um, but that would be the the principle. Because there might be some different ser like search parameters that you might want based on what a company data might there is all I was thinking. Like you Can might you... want to specifically search for something that's on a beach or a river or whatever. Is is it realistic that they'll have any opportunity data? Um, my view would be it'd be I'd be surprised if they did. Um, into outside of maybe not opportunity, maybe like activity data, I can't know, or event based data. But they'll be like blue space or um, more relevant kind of data. I'd assume again. Give me if I'm wrong, but I can't imagine there's going to be tons of events. And things like that, what, so, what we're typically used to. Yeah, so what Tom's talking about um, a an open active opportunity that is a location, an activity, but it's got a date and a time, and it's quite you know, it's quite specific. And and um, that kind of timed events, I think I have seen some of the uh, <laughs> water authority websites with, with that kind of level of detail. They've got uh, events or session style data. Um, but I think that's something to explore, Tom, because I'd imagine not all of them will have, and that's the kind of variation in maturity that's, um, you know, that we're talking okay. about. So then we're in okay. this, this idea of the kind of the related to the club level data that we, we're talking about, you know, where you've got the location, mm -hmm. you've got the activity, and you've got some contact details, but you might not get as far as the date and timed events um, and how, how we present that information in a useful way. Um, it's it's a step towards that kind of session bookable session um, experience that we're working towards. But I think it'd be interesting to see what what kind of the balances of people who have got that date and time session data, 
to to just general you can go water skiing here you can go abseiling or abseiling whatever because i think that's worth just being being clear about with these conversations because i i think there's a bit of a if people like yeah our date is open and then the disconnect between that actually coming into like our activity finder if it's not relevant to users that tends to has happened with open referral data in the past and it's like oh it's open why is it not here and then you actually look into it and it's like stuff that's not useful for those journeys that we're trying to achieve so i think having some clarity on what that would be would be helpful um and and how it can be applied alicia or jess do you have a kind of sense of, of what type of data would be or, or is that just something that, that will come out of the workshops again yeah, that's definitely a, a workshop thing. So I think we'll take all of these points into there and hopefully be able to get some guidance if we're heading in the right or wrong direction. So yeah, it's really helpful to hear all of these points to think about. Cool, thanks. Uh, Jess? Um, I actually had um, two questions. So the first one was just, um, and, and it might have already been shared with us as well, but I think it would be helpful to see the reference data that already exists and maybe bring that into the workshop as well um because I think from memory from our last call there's been quite a lot of work that's already happened there um so again just to drive that workshop towards let's not recreate but let's actually work on what's already been developed um so if that is able to share that would be great um and then the second question I had was just a bit more on, on the use case. So I think we've spoken quite a lot around kind of looking at different leisure sites and booking activities. Um, is there also interest or current activity within Open Active around, um, around kind of, I don't know the best way to call it, but kind of like route planning? So if people want, because I think, the water companies do have really large um, walking routes and, and leisure sites that would probably be used for that purpose. Um, so just interested to know whether that's something that's currently been working on as well. Director of Blue and Green Spaces. Sorry, Jules, I didn't quite catch that. Uh, a directory for Blue and Green Spaces. So, where, you know, where the local parks are and the walking routes around reservoirs, that kind of thing. Yes. I think... There's a difference between listing a place, a directory, and then a route, you know, and some of the kind of information around that. But that's certainly something we have, we are exploring, and we've had conversations with a couple of um, some councils and some organisations like the Ramblers uh, around publishing routes more consistently. We have a, a draft open active standard for routes and route information. Um, so that's something we are exploring. Okay. Thanks, Howard. Uh, Andrew? Yeah, I, I think just for, just following that thread, we do have reference data for facilities. And in open active facilities tend to be things like a tennis court or a football pitch or a swimming pool. But I guess conceptually, you could have a, a facility that is a, a mountain biking facility or a sailing facility. So, so there might be facilities level data that come out of the, out of the water companies. Um, I, I think one of the things that we need to do in the workshops that are coming up is really make it clear what can be encoded using Open Active to inform that discussion that the utility companies have about what they could encode. Um, so, so I think that's that's probably going to be really helpful for shaping that workshop. Um, I think I've got my hand up to had another question, but Howard, do you want to chip on those last points? No, um, I also had another another observation, but um, for me, I will just very quickly, something like the sample data on the data visualizer brings it to life a little bit in terms of, um, you know, more so than just lists and lists of reference data, like the activity list, you know, the kinds of activities. It's, I'm just brought it up on another screen, they're zoomed in on, on some green space, uh, water space rather, and there's Surrey Docks Fitness and Water Sports Centre. So it's those kind of things, and you know, you can explore at that level. That might help to bring it to life, the kind of things we're talking about. But sorry, Andrew, go on. Yeah, so, so my question was kind of going in the other direction. So we, we've talked a bit about um, 
for water companies publishing data about the opportunities they provide. But through Stream, they're going to that they, they will be they are and will be publishing a whole raft of information about water, um, water quality, the environment, um, and and I think there could be a potentially really interesting use case, secondary use case around using the, the open data within Stream to contextualize activities. Um, so actually, you know, could you help people understand whether it's a good idea to go um, cold water swimming uh, after a storm? Um, and the water companies will say they don't publish data about pollution because they publish data about sewer overflows, but uh, storm overflows. But it, you know, if you knew the storm overflow had overflowed, it might change your decision about what you choose to do, whether you go for a run or whether you go for a swim. Um, so, so I think there's something quite interesting, perhaps for people on the open active side to consider about how they could use that open data that's coming out of stream alongside data about their opportunities. No one's about anyone had any thoughts on that. Uh, thanks, Andrew. Uh, Alicia? Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I think that's something I've spoken about with some other people recently, and also the more citizen science space as well, is how can we connect all of those dots and start to build that bigger picture because it's not until you have those different data sets and sources with that you can start to layer that information and start to generate insights and analysis so yeah definitely always open ears for things that other people other data sets that would be useful um to go alongside activity data um yeah Thanks. Uh, Tom, I think you were next with your hand. I'm not sure about that, but I'll take the opportunity. Um, perfect. So, yeah, I was just going to say that I think it would be a useful exercise to look at. Um, oh, Jenny's here, by the way. I don't know if she was here before when we were talking about her. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, essentially, it would be useful just to map out, like, the desired user journeys from, I guess, an open active perspective, and then see how water data could help improve those journeys or act like, I think, otherwise, it's a super open yeah. thing that actually might not it'd be best beneficial, like actually focusing it at, at delivering, helping more people get active, and specifically how with the current infrastructure, um, that would enable that to be, I think everyone jumps to the kind of water-based activity um, but yeah it's just about kind of trying to really understand what user journeys are possible what the open active is enabling how can this then benefit those user journeys rather than potential user journeys that aren't actually in play or actually won't have an impact today um, would be what i would suggest thanks tom i think that's a really good suggestion uh jules I was wondering whether just to get the like the local reservoirs, for example, get the car park location data, get the bus stop location data, and just just shoving it all up there now into our club finder, just so it's there and the data's there. No, she's more than capable. All right, in a uh, thanks, Jules. Uh, Jenny, I think you're next. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Um, so just on um, what's just been said, a, a quick one um, on a quick win um, for locations and access to waterways would be Paddle Points, which is on the Go Paddling website supported by British Canoeing. Um, that serves multiple water sports because if you can be carrying down your own canoe, uh, canoe or kayak into it, you could probably be putting other things on the water too. Um, that could be a quick win on what you've just said. Great, thank you, Jenny. Great suggestion, um, and I think I, I have been trying to um, get in touch with uh, someone at, at Paddle um, as well. So yeah, hopefully um, we can get them involved in, in these conversations. My um, best person's Chris Earle. If you want me to put him in touch with you, <clears throat> he's the director sure. at, yeah, British, yeah, at Paddle UK. It's um, I think Barry Barry Wade is the the one I've been talking to. But yeah, okay, great. We we can maybe pick that up after the call. Um, Dave, I think uh, you had something to say as well. Yeah, just another idea. The, the thing that facilitates almost all outdoor exercise is water. Um, uh, when you're a runner, you need water. When you're a cyclist, you need water. When you're uh, playing a team speed, um, sport, you need water. 
and um, a play going on to Andrew's point, I wouldn't publish sewage data because it's a massive bone of contention down here in Brixton where we can't swim after time because of that. But a really positive thing would be to encourage those 16 water companies to do more to open up access to water for those people that are exercising. And it's like a secondary rather than a, a primary um, data point, if you see what I'm getting at. Thanks, Dave. Um, yeah, really interesting perspective there. Cool. Um, did anyone else have any other thoughts or um, questions that they'd like to raise? Um, I think a, a few people joined a, a bit later, so sorry if there was any confusion about the um, the meeting time. Uh, Paul? Hi, uh, yeah, I was one of those people, sorry for joining late. Um, I was going to say about the bathing water that the Environment Agency post as well. Um, they post up online the bathing water quality for beaches across the country, and that is, unlike the sewage, it's actually done on water testing. So it might be something for beach locations we could feed into it. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, good um, good suggestion. We were we were um, yeah just touching on that a bit earlier about we weren't quite sure whether um, some of the coastal um, data was included or not. But we're, yeah, something certainly to pick up and follow up on in the, in the subsequent workshops. Any any other thoughts or, or comments or suggestions around this? And um, thanks, Paul, for putting the link there in the in the chat. Okay. Just just one from me. So River Action mm -hmm. Group pulled together a manifesto with um British Rowing Paddle UK. Where are we on it as well? I'll try find it and drop it in the chat. Um but yeah, River Action Group were pulling together to put um political pressure on cleaner waterways, um, either in May or April. I'll find it and share it. Brilliant. Thank you, Jenny. Um, I think that's been been really useful. Um, Alicia and or Jess, I don't know if there's anything you just wanted to kind of close with or, or if there's any kind of next steps you can kind of outline um, or other opportunities for, um, for people on the call to kind of stay involved and, and continue the conversation if they want to. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for your suggestions, ideas and questions. It's been enormously helpful. I think we've had more to go at with this than any of the others we've worked on. So really appreciate that. Um, and I can share the details, Tim, with you maybe about the workshops. And then if anyone is interested, but it's completely up to you. But if someone from the ODI could come along, that would be really helpful. Um, so we'll detail out and include all of those key points that we've talked about today. Um, and there was something else, but it's completely gone. Oh, we have a LinkedIn page and I can share a link to the um, to the platform if you're interested. So I'll just share the links. But again, thanks for all of your interesting points. It's been really great. Yeah, Alessia, I just popped them um, them both in, in the chat. Um, Never mind, thank you. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think also as we progress through the data workshops, being able to re-engage with this forum and I guess provide answers to all of those questions that we'll take into the workshop in terms of the data that the water companies have. Um, Tom, to your point, if we can um, have a look more at kind of or work with you in any way on that um user journey piece once we know the data that the water companies have um then also very happy to do that because i think from from a stream perspective being able to really clearly articulate the value of um the data being published openly is just um well naturally but it, it is a must kind of for the water companies to be able to get it through their own internal governance so i think that use case journey and being able to highlight you know or validate yes there is benefit in adding water company data would be really helpful for the members as well brilliant that's really helpful thank you um and for those of you who um are maybe not on the call live and watching the recording I'll, I'll make sure the links get shared as well either either in the description below the video or um in the in the meeting slides which which will be linked in the description of the video so 
yeah um if you have a look there then uh, you should be able to find all these links links somewhere <laughs> I'll, I'll find a find a place for them um brilliant well thank you very much um jess and alicia for for joining and running that session i think it's been a really interesting discussion today and um, we've got about five ten minutes left uh, of today's call um so there's uh, a bit of space now for for any other business if um anyone has anything they wanted to raise or questions um, otherwise we can um, we can wrap up the meeting a bit earlier today. It was in my calendar for one o'clock so yeah sorry for being late. No that's all right yes yeah, so, sorry there was a slight change in the, in the meeting time so sorry if there was any confusion there but yeah. Um, I hope you all were able to disrupt yourselves. <laughs> we we yeah, we we managed just about without you without your disruptions, Charles. <laughs> but you, you um, don't have the biscuits today, so that's where we, 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 we are looking at a better way of uh setting the timing to these meetings. Um but we haven't quite found what it is yet. But yeah, no, and um, thanks uh thanks for joining anyway, Jules. Good to have you here. And um yeah, you can always catch up with the the meeting recording if you if you want to look back at um at the big first half of the meeting brilliant okay um it looks like everyone is uh is happy so we can maybe um wrap up a, a few minutes early and um, so thank you again to jess and alicia um, and thank you everyone else for joining i think it's been a really good session and, and really good discussion um and so yeah look look forward to seeing you again um at the next aef in a few weeks time <laughs>